I think what we're looking at um, is, and it could happen quite quickly, uh, we're, we're looking at um, a new gold-backed currency. Now, that currency um, would not be priced in, you know, sort of dollars, but backed by gold or something like that. No, it would be priced in uh, grams of gold. Um, and uh, so it would be completely divorced from the currency scene, as it were, you know, the fiat currency scene. That's really the only way this can practically work. After months of debate about various currency and commodity baskets, a Russia and China-led consortium has settled on using gold as the basis of a planned new international currency system separate from the U.S. dollar and euro. Alastair McLeod, head of research at Gold Money, believes that a significant development might be on the horizon, potentially leading to establishment of a new gold-backed currency. In this scenario, the currency would not be tied to traditional fiat currencies like the U.S. dollar, but instead be linked to a specific amount of gold. The BRICS nations reportedly plan to introduce a joint currency backed by gold when they meet for their summit on August 22nd to 24 in Johannesburg. Around 40 countries have expressed interest in joining the BRICS alliance a month before the summit. BRICS ambassador Anil Suklal confirmed to Reuters that all the major global South countries have expressed interest in joining the bloc. McLeod believes that BRICS aims to become a champion of the developing world and initiate trade agreements in local currencies. He suggests that this gathering could mark a pivotal moment in the emergence of a new trade settlement currency backed by gold. Not only McLeod, but also the famous analyst Andy Schechtman believes that BRICS will issue a common settlement currency and it will be backed by something. McLeod sees the emergence of a new trade settlement currency as a potential turning point with confidence in fiat currencies eroding rapidly. This could lead to a decline in the demand for bonds, particularly those denominated in fiat currencies such as U.S. Treasury bonds. He suggests that this shift could lead to higher yields on these bonds, potentially creating funding challenges for the U.S. government. Now let's watch excerpts from Alastair McLeod's interview with Liberty and Finance. Before we start, smash that subscribe button and remember to enable post notifications to stay updated on our latest uploads. Thank you and enjoy the video. I mean, the amazing thing is that the mainstream me media hasn't reported on this at all. Um, we're talking about, um, if you like, a BRICS Plus meeting, which uh, is going to happen in Johannesburg on the 22nd to the 24th of this month, which is only, what, two weeks? Away. One week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, this is going to be a major event. Um, the background to it, I think if you go back to uh, after sanctions were first imposed on Russia, um, uh, President Putin stood up at the St. Petersburg Economic Forum, um, and I think it was in June last year, mm -hmm. and basically said that, um, you know, any country which holds dollars or euros must be mad because they, they you know, they weaponize them against you. Um, and uh, I mean, this has obviously happened to Russia. But the point was he was uh, addressing 81 official delegations among the 14,000 attendees at that conference, 81 official delegations. So um, that's a very large number of countries. I mean, I think the total number of countries around the world is <clears throat> something like 170. So we're talking about nearly half the world uh, in terms of governments attended that, heard this and got the message. But interestingly, I saw that Jim Rickards, who's also been following this, um, I think at least as closely as I have, uh, he came out with a tweet this morning saying that um, the latest news he has is that 60 countries are, are going to be attending. So that leaves only 21 of the 81 <laughs> official delegations so far not declared. Um, now, as to what it is, um, the Russians, uh, through their media channel, uh, quite clearly stated that on the agenda will be a discussion for a new trade settlement currency backed by gold. Now, nobody in the West is really prepared to accept that that is going to happen. And even the Indians, who are the eye in BRICS, um, some of their officials have come out and said, no, 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 this is not going to happen. But the reality of it is, if you want to buy energy, you're going to have to pay on terms which the energy seller determines, or wheat or whatever. So, um, and I think also that among the Latin American countries and in Africa and so on and so forth, there are quite a lot of nations who export 
um, commodities and so on, you know, um, raw materials, foodstuffs and so on, who would actually like to be paid in something better than the dollar. So you can see that this isn't just a quite, quite simple answer of India turning around saying, no, 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 we won't accept it and sort of thinking they've got a veto on it. They haven't because the veto actually is in the hands of the exporters. And I think when you have got a new trade settlement currency um, actually emerging in the wake of this BRICS conference, then the confidence in fiat currencies will begin to evaporate and it couldn't begin to evaporate quite rapidly. This brings me back to um, the uh, uh, level of yield on bonds. When you have um, an accelerated falling in the purchasing power of fiat currencies, then obviously uh, the bonds are going to be unwanted. The US government has a funding problem, uh, which they could probably resolve, but only at far higher yields. Uh, and so you can see that coming out of this is some sort of inflection point, which uh, would be undermining uh, the whole of the fiat currency system and the financial markets, uh, you know, uh, which, which depend upon it. So I think this this uh, summit in Johannesburg is extremely important. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you see the way uh, gold is just in the doldrums at the moment. You know, this to me looks like a market which um, nobody knows what to do. Central bank buying of gold has continued to be strong during the first half of 2023. And it has been long rumored that China holds substantially more gold than the 2,068 metric tons officially reported. During the 1980s and 1990s, China experienced inward capital flows due to foreign investments and growing exports. The People's Bank of China controlled these transactions, which McLeod suggests could have led to substantial gold accumulation. During the interview, McLeod also highlighted China's significant investment in gold mining, which propelled the country to become the world's largest gold miner by tonnage. Despite this considerable gold accumulation, Chinese refined gold bars are rarely seen in international markets, and any sightings are often believed to be illegally smuggled out of the country. McLeod sees this ongoing gold accumulation by China as a black hole that has been taking gold out of the global system for decades. Let's get back to the interview. I looked into this a long time ago, and um, I unearthed the um, regulations which appointed the Bank of China, the monopoly in terms of um, acquiring and managing the state's gold and silver um, holdings. Now, part of this is obviously reserves. At that time, they didn't really declare any reserves, really. I think you know, something like 300 tons was all they showed. But um, th these regulations dated in back to 1983 when the bear market in gold um, was more or less just starting. Because, it, I mean, the peak price was, I think, 1980, something like that. Um, so it was not long after that peak. Um, and if you look at the inward capital flows, um, uh, you, you know, when, when uh, you had uh, US corp corporates and uh, some of the larger European corporates beginning to establish factories, you know, Capital was going in to build the factories and all the rest of it. All the foreign exchange goes through the People Bank, People's Bank of China. And now come the 1990s, um, you still had those capital flows coming in, but at the same time, exports were beginning to really grow. So um, uh, there was a very substantial amount of foreign exchange um, changing hands and all under the control of the People's Bank of China. And my assumption was that um, if the People's Bank of China just put to put aside 10 percent of those flows at contemporary prices, and bear in mind it went down to two hundred and fifty dollars at one stage, um, they would have accumulated uh, something in the order of 20 to 25,000 tons. Uh, and um, I've had anecdotal evidence from um, you know people who um, well, you sort of you know, uh, no businessmen who have uh, interacted with with the um, with with the Liberation Army, the People's Liberation Army, and so on and so forth, and um, they have been shown um, some of these reserves. I mean, you know, it's just absolutely staggering the amount that they have actually accumulated. Obviously, when China decided that it accumulated enough gold as a state at that stage, the People's Bank set up the Shanghai Gold Exchange and permitted ordinary people to accumulate gold. And in the early days, they even advertised on television, go and buy gold, you know, you know, it's good for you or something, you know, whatever the, the line was. Uh, and um, 
Consequently, uh, from what we can see, the gross um, acquisition uh, measured by withdrawals from the uh, Shanghai Gold Exchange's vaulting system uh, currently totals around about 24,000 tons. So this is an addition to the gold which uh, China originally accumulated. Uh, furthermore, China invested very heavily in uh, gold mining, and um, it became quite rapidly the largest gold miner in the world by, you know, by tonnage. So all that has accumulated. And if you go and talk to anyone on the sort of, you know, the refining industry and so on and so forth, and you ask them, do you see any um, uh, Chinese refined bars? The answer is no. In fact, I did get someone who admitted that he saw a few, but he thought they had been illegally smuggled out of China. So, I mean, basically, gold is it's like a black hole. The gold has been going into China, um, you know, for the last 40 years, 50 years. I mean, this is just, it's just gone out of our system. Undoubtedly, introducing a new gold-backed currency by the BRICS nations is a significant development with the potential to reshape the global financial system. The BRICS venture underscores an effort to de-dollarize amid concerns over Washington's ability to weaponize the greenback through economic sanctions. What are your thoughts on the potential impact of a new gold-backed currency on the global economy? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you found this video informative, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and enable notifications to stay informed about our latest videos on silver, gold, and copper. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your support.